start. Hey everyone, this is Mike Tholfson from the Microsoft Education team. And we are doing our daily remote learning with Microsoft Education webinar. And so today we have a bunch of exciting guests coming on. In terms of the agenda, I'll give the latest news and updates. And then we have Shay Harris from the Microsoft Education Engagement Team. We've also got Magnus Santor, a great Microsoft MVP in Norway that you know Shay and myself and many others have worked with a lot. And he's done some huge Teams deployments and learned a lot in Norway. So we'll be having some great feedback and presentation from him. In terms of our regular three links we always show, there's the Microsoft Education Remote Learning Site. There's the Teams EDU Quick Start Guide. This has been super popular. We actually updated it recently, so now there's even more great tips on setting up meetings and meeting options and calls because there's a lot of meetings being set up in the world right now on Teams. And then we always encourage people to sign up for our remote learning community. And that's a community that's over 4,500 educators from all around the world. We've got the Microsoft product team in there. Shay's in there. I'm in there. We're giving help. There's educators collaborating, lots of learning, lots of tips and tricks and helping people out. So we encourage everyone to join our remote learning community. In terms of today's updates, there are a few here. First off, Alice Keeler has been recording some incredible, we call it micro PD. There are 30 to 45 second short little videos all about how to get up and running on Teams. It's great. It's not overwhelming. You can consume these little quick tips. Really cool stuff. She's putting out more and more videos all the time. So really encourage people to check those out and share those. I actually myself just put together a little set of quick tips on the inclusive classroom. So there's some great accessible and inclusive one to two minute videos on how to get going with the inclusive classroom. And also one of our producers who you know well, Maryline, put together this amazing list of education frequent links, all of those little aka.ms links and other useful tips and tricks for remote learning. She's put them together in a really nice, fully web accessible list, and you can pick and choose whichever links work best for you. So we encourage people to check those out and share those. So without further ado, we're going to have Shay Harris on next. And she is our Microsoft Education Engagement GPM. And I'm going to be her slide clicker. And she is going to start talking about what she and others are doing with the engagement team. So she, floor is yours. Hi, everybody. It's so good to see you again. I wanted to give you all a little bit of behind the scenes of who is supporting the enabling remote learning community, as well as who supports the education worldwide customer engagement team. Um, I am Shay Harris. I do lead the customer engagement team. Um, you can see a couple of our familiar faces there. Many of these folks are in the uh, enabling remote learning community, uh, actively engaging with all of you. So what does our team do? Why do we exist? Well, we know that deploying Office 365, M365, making digital transformation transitions can be arduous. And our team has been um, created to help support you in that journey, whatever that means to you. And we do that in a number of ways. One is through, like we've talked about, uh, creating the enabling remote learning community. But there are many other programs that my team supports. I'm going to click forward. Mike, you want to click forward? Uh, I did. Is it not come through yet? Not yet. Uh, again? Not yet. Um, there it goes. All right. So I want to talk through some of the other programs that my team supports. Uh, one is uh, support in general. So for many of you that run into issues and escalations, um, we have a support pathway called aka.ms slash edusup edu supp. Um, that is an actual different support pathway that goes to a specialized group of education support engineers. 
And this pathway is to ensure that we solve your solutions or your problems to get you to solutions quickly. Um, that is a whole army of engineers that not only work directly with you, but they also educate the rest of the company on the back end on what it means to support education as a unique industry. The second uh, program I want to highlight is called the EIP K-12 Higher Ed. This is the Education Insider Program K-12 Higher Ed IT Admin Community. This is a very broad IT admin community. Uh, anyone is welcome to join. You simply follow the link that's provided. Um, and I'm going to go through the details in just a second. There are four additional programs that you see on this slide, but I am going to go more into the Education Insider program. So Mike, if you go forward one more. So what is the Education Insider program? It is focused on IT administrators getting quick, helpful information um, to support their journey. What does this mean? It means that you sign up. You do have to sign an NDA. We do share lots of of um, early roadmap information. We provide um, monthly phone calls that you can join. They're recorded or you can read later. Um, we take your input on the types of um, conversations and, and topics that you want to see in a future meeting. And then you get to you get to be part of a, um, the Insider Program team. And on that team, you can ask all of your questions no matter when they come up. So this is a highly engaging community just for you. Now, as we say IT admins, anyone can call themselves an IT admin. And so we welcome everyone. And the links to follow are on the slide and you can read more about it there. And just don't hesitate to reach out. Next slide. So what do these programs look like? So one of the programs that wasn't actually on that initial overview was the uh, Enabling Remote Learning Community. This is our newest program that we launched just under a month ago, so three weeks. We've got nearly, um, nearly 3,000 very active users um, as part of this team. The whole purpose was to connect our product teams, so Microsoft product teams, directly with customers to ensure that you were getting the information that you needed to support remote learning around the world. Um, how we did it, we simply used the products that we tell you to use, where we set up a customer facing team, we add, a, we add you, you fill out a form, we vet that you're an educator, um, we add you to the team, and you have at your fingertips a whole ready-made community to answer your questions. Um, we've set up different channels, as you can see when you, you get in there, um, to support where you are in your journey, whether it's deployment or you're trying to figure out how to run a remote learning classroom, um, tips and tricks, or you need assistance on maybe some support tickets that you've logged. Um, this was a, a pilot for us, and we have been so overwhelmed by the one interest and two active conversations that are happening in there. And it's really heartwarming to see community actually helping community. Um, and what's the benefit for us? Mike, if you go to the next slide, we actually are learning a ton from you. Um, through the, uh, the conversations that are taking place in the community, uh, we've learned that there are some service issues that we're following up on. We've learned some new features that are required to really fully support and feel secure in a remote learning environment around meetings and controls. And then we've also learned that there's a lot of licensing challenges that are really hard for users to understand. Um, all of these things came directly out of the community and it's information that we can not only can um, get to the right support path pathways, but we can also bubble this up to leadership to make sure that we have the right support to fix it once and for all. The next thing we're doing is we're trying new engagements. So now that we have this thriving and active community, we want to continue to make sure that that it's valuable to you. And so we're trying new things, just the same types of, of tips and tricks we would tell educators to try with their students. So we've been hosting office hours and some tips and tricks times, and both have been overwhelmingly successful. And I would say these webinars are a third new engagement model. And finally, We've also learned some hard lessons about supporting a community. Where we weren't explicit uh, originally, we do want to remind everyone that this community is all about bringing people together. 
to have deep conversations, share and learn um, from each other, share resources, but it's not meant to be a place to solicit of any kind. And finally, wrapping up my time, the things I want you to remember are, I want you, if you're interested in signing up for our Education Insider program, go ahead to that link and sign up. If you, uh, we want to encourage you to keep participating in the Enabling Remote Learning team. Um, the stories that you've shared, the tips that you've provided have helped the world to transform into a re remote learning community. And finally, tell us what else you need. If there are ideas that you have or if there are um, new resources that you need, please reach out. That's what we're here for. Great, thank you, Shay. So, uh a ton of great information about the Education Insider Program, our community, Shay's engagement team, and a lot of ways that customers are interacting daily with all of us at Microsoft. And that's, like Shay mentioned, this remote learning webinar is part of that community and some of the ways that we're trying to engage folks and help through these difficult times. So next up, we have Magnus Santor from Norway. And Magnus has been working with teams in education Gosh, for quite a few years, Magnus, you'll have to tell us how long. I've lost track. He's worked very closely with Shay's team and others like Matt and Bryce. And I think all of us have met Magnus in Norway at this point, uh, visiting some of the great work he's been doing. And so with that, I'm going to stop presenting and we're going to have Magnus share his screen and talk about what he's been doing for teams with security and governance and a lot, a lot of really important topics as we look at these large scale deployments. Thanks, Mike, um, for that introduction. So my name is uh, my name is Magnus, and like you said, I've been working with Teams for Education yeah, since 2017. I think about May, so quite a few years. Um, I currently work as a solution architect for a European tech company called Atia, uh, where I spend most of my time helping public sector customers doing Microsoft Teams uh, the right way. Um, before joining Atia, I, I worked for a Norwegian municipality. Uh, where among other things, I was in charge of moving 7,000 students and staff to the cloud with Microsoft 365. I'm also a Microsoft Teams MVP. Uh, I have a blog called teams.rocks and I run a user group on Facebook uh, with actually now close to 5,000 educators and IT pros, up 3,000 since Corona, uh, and it's called Microsoft Teams for uh, Education. Uh, you are, of course, more than welcome to join us uh, using the QR code in the bottom right corner. Uh, but uh, the title uh, of today's presentation is Creating a Safe uh, Learning Environment. Uh, and I think privacy is a fundamental right uh, and something that needs to be taken uh, seriously. At the same time, we need to consider the extraordinary situation we're currently facing, right? and balance this against other needs like uh, disease control. This is from last night. Uh, UNESCO tells us that 184 countries, actually 185 as of this morning, uh, experience a countrywide school closure. More than 1.5 billion or about 90% of all learners are affected. And th these kids uh, still need education, right? A key responsibility for, for teachers, though, uh, in ter terms of privacy is to make sure that students are well aware of, of these privacy issues and how to navigate the Internet in a secure fashion uh, and provide clear guidance on what's OK uh, and what's not, uh, not unlike uh, in the classroom, right? Uh, and it's up to school owners uh, or school authorities to provide policies and guidelines on how to use apps and services like Microsoft Teams. So this is my uh, living room slash home office slash classroom earlier this uh, this week. Uh, and my 11 year old uh, and her teacher uh, is here explaining her and the rest of the class how to behave uh, using video and chat. Um, and that video is not a requirement, but if they choose to share their video, they should blur their background. As a parent, I received a message telling me that schools had opened up for chat and video. 
as a pedagog pedagogical tool uh, and in order to make sure that they can uh, communicate uh, well with students. I was asked to pay extra attention, talk to my kids about usage guidelines, uh, that content shared primarily should be subject or course related. Uh, that is important not to make noise and to disturb. And that it's of course zero tolerance for any any bullying or exclusion. On the more technical side, teachers are team owners and can configure settings like member permissions uh, within their own class team. Like if students can create channels or add apps, if they can use uh, memes and emojis. Uh, and we've also got the option within the members tab uh, to mute one or more students if they start making noise in uh, the conversation. This is a team setting though, so it will not mute students from chat or any other teams, just uh, the class team uh, that you provide this setting set. Um, so in a small private school or in a district with uh, a few hundred students, there's nothing wrong about teachers configuring their own teams, uh, but it's my opinion and it's not always shared by Microsoft, but it's my opinion that, that young kids uh, shouldn't be able to create uh, their own teams. Uh, and in a district with thousands or even tens of thousands of students, we might need to provision thousands of teams every year. Like this August, we had a customer uh, create 7000 teams uh, that month. Uh, and in such environments, it's not really feasible for teachers to click around Microsoft Teams, trying their best to create teams according to naming conventions and with the same set of settings. Instead, we take control um, by disabling uh, group creation for certain groups of users. And then we can use tools like uh, School Data Sync. I'm not going to spend any more time on School Data Sync because I know Bill Sloss covered this uh, in a recent episode. But we all often also help uh, municipalities and other organizations with uh, a form like this, where teachers and students and others can request a team that will be provisioned automatically upon manager approval or IT approval uh, with a set of predefined settings. Uh, in the back end, we use uh, automation tools like Power Automate or Azure Automation, but that's not important. Uh, just know that this is this is possible. We might, as part of this process, want to disable guest access, so students or teachers are uh, aren't able to to invite a guest into the into the team. We might apply those naming conventions. Maybe with like a set of channels or tabs in project teams. It's very uh, they often want a set of folders, a folder structure, so every project starts off the same. And this way IT remains in control while schools keep uh, their flexibility. Now that we control the team's creation process, we can have a look at how to control different features and functionality within Teams. So um, IT or the team's service admin can apply a set of policies like messaging policies, meeting policies, and app permission policies and these policies can be assigned to one or more students uh, a group of users or to everyone let's say students shouldn't be able to kick off a meeting with meet now in uh, channels uh, or start the recording in a remote class but we want to keep all this enabled for teachers right we're also with the messaging apologies able to disable chat. I know some districts allow chat for older students, but not let's say grade one through uh, four. IT will apply that policy using uh, PowerShell uh, and chat will magically disappear. One thing that is good to know though is that this also affects chat between teachers and these young students. Uh, which might not be what you want uh, in this day and age. So that was some of the policies, but we've also got uh, tools or 
features, if you will, like scope search. And in order to utilize Teams scope directory search, we need exchange address book policies configured. And I apologize if this gets too technical, but what we do is we basically subdivide our uh, internal directory and then assi assign users a policy, which is a subset of available address lists. We often see this in education. Students in school A uh, maybe shouldn't be searchable by students in school B uh, or by employees that are not associated with the school. Uh, in a municipality, that could be those working in the administration, in healthcare, other parts, and they most likely have no business communicating with our kids, right? So with address book policies in place, we can tell Microsoft Teams to respect these uh, by enabling the setting called uh, scope directory search uh, using an exchange address book policy. So this is what it looks like when when searching for someone uh, outside of your scope. Um, you will not uh, find any matches and uh, it's you get an explanation that you need to talk to IT about expanding the scope of your search. Scope search has a few limitations. If you're not all up in the cloud, this feature is currently not supported for those users with on-prem mailboxes. There are some workarounds, but it's far from perfect. Uh, but the biggest issue is, however, the fact that it only limits search not the actual communication and collaboration. So if you were to know someone's user principal name, which most often is their email address, you will be able to initiate uh, either a message or a call. So if it's a hard requirement in your district that certain groups of people don't interact using Teams, you might need to consider purchasing those E5 or A5 licenses or an add-on called advanced, advanced compliance and have a look at something called information barriers. Information barriers was originally built for the finance industry because of regulations like FINRA uh, that put in place uh, to, to put in place uh, to control potential conflicts of interest. Uh, it's however equally, I think, useful in education. Uh, if you, in this example, you can see that a student might try to send a funny meme to the mayor uh, of the municipality or the other way around, an employee from a department other than education uh, who might have evil intentions uh, could try to call uh, a student. Information barriers, barriers will simply prevent uh, the call or prevent any messages uh, and make sure that two people from uh, different sides of the scope or, or the barrier uh, simply cannot connect. OK, so uh, in summary, there are, I think, lots of tools, features and control mechanisms within Microsoft 365 that you or your favorite global admin can implement to create the safest learning environment possible for uh, your kids. But if you're an educator, I personally think it's it's equally important to teach students about privacy and provide clear guidance on what's OK uh, and what's not. Um, and I think if you have any questions, uh, you can post them in the in the Q&A. Uh, and if you wish to connect, I'm in the enable remote learning team, uh, also on Twitter and other other social platforms. Um, I hope this was valuable uh, to you and that you learned something new. And that's it from me. Thank you. Thanks, Magnus. Really, really useful information in here. And I think actually I think the fact that it is a little more technical for some people, it'll be really helpful, especially because it's hard to get that type of information. And now that people can also watch the recorded YouTube video, they can get your information uh, that's in there on whether it's Twitter or the remote learning community. I think it's really helpful. So thank you, you so much. And also, oh well, yeah. There's one question. Oh, OK, sure, feel free. 
It says we use Gmail, not email in Office 365. Could scope search still be set up in our environment? Oh, when you're asking me, right? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> can, can I get back to you on that? <laughs> That's a tough question. Um, yes. They would need an exchange online. Um, yeah, mailbox, but yeah, I, I couldn't answer on top of, off the top of my head. Sorry. So how about we say this, that we'll answer that in the remote learning community. And so those that want to know, they can join too. We will, indeed. Awesome. Okay, so thank you, Magnus. And it's also very late where Magnus is at, and so uh, you should probably be getting to bed unless you're a night owl, and then it's maybe not a big deal. But it's uh, what 1 a.m. there, maybe. So yeah, please sleep tight. Thank you for joining us late where you are. Thank In you. terms of the remote resources, just to recap, we have our remote learning site for education. We have our updated teams for education quick start guide. And we want to encourage people to join our remote learning community where Shay and Matt and myself and Mary Lyon and Magnus are all hanging out and we're waiting to help and engage with you. Also, we'll be posting the, the PowerPoint webinar notes. So this entire presentation, all of the links, Magnus's great slides, Shay slides, everything will be public by tomorrow morning. The YouTube video will also be posted probably by tomorrow. Tomorrow. So if you want someone else to watch this video or you want to reference it again and re go through anything that we talked about, that'll be on our playlist. And as Shay mentioned, our education support alias link is here. So if you need help and assistance, definitely use that. And we can try and help out. Our next three webinars, and we've got a special one on Friday. Usually we take Friday off, but we've got a special one on Friday. But tomorrow we've got Holly Clark and Matt Miller, who are incredible educators with lots of innovative pedagogical ideas. We are partnering with them on some really cool online learning ideas. We also have the, I like to call the legendary Dr. David Kellerman on Thursday, April 2nd, talking about higher education and what he's been doing at the University of New South Wales in Australia. And then on Friday, Ian Mikitel from the Whiteboard team is going to be talking about all the cool stuff you can do with Whiteboard inside of Teams, which is honestly, it's a perfect app for remote learning. And so it's time has come and we'll be talking more about that. And if you want the entire schedule in terms of upcoming webinars, show notes, links, time zones, all that good stuff, make sure to go to this link right here and find the latest and greatest. And with that, I want to give a, a big shout out to Mary Lyon Hoekstra, our, our co-producer along with Matt Whitehead and Bryce Kenning who have also been helping out behind the scenes with a lot of the different aspects. So thank you very much and we will see you soon.